But in Section 5 and Section 6, they're so close, and a lot of them, a lot of the teams compete in the same tournament, so they can actually yeah. get hands on each other. Mm -hmm. So and uh, that's a good uh, barometer of how good a person or a team is. Oh, that's excellent. Now, what are the, some of the, the, the top um, tournaments that you can, you know, you can rattle off, like where some of the best guys will be? I know there's some tournaments where you have like a, a ranked team and then all the other teams are smaller, yeah. but where do all the big boys come? Well, I, uh, there's a lot of great tournaments in Section 5, big ones. Um, Tiki Burnaby is coming up pretty soon, but I actually did write a, a list of important dates. I guess I might give you some of those. The Niagara Frontier okay. Wrestling Officials a Tournament, Wrestling Officials Association Tournament is uh, the weekend of January 5th and 6th at Niagara County Community College. Okay. The, uh, the, the Niagara Frontier Wrestling Officials Association um, kind of hosts that. Mm -hmm in conjunction with Niagara Community College and some of the local schools provide, you know, labor, I suppose, for mats and table help and all that. A lot of teams come to that from, I've seen teams from, from, the, from, uh, from Central New York, um, from Albany, from closer to Binghamton, bring a couple wrestlers at least. That's more of an individual tournament. Okay. Uh, this weekend actually is ECICs, which is always a great tournament. It's all of the ECI schools in the ECIC. Which that's is this around, weekend? That's right. That's at Star Point. Um, it's about 20 teams. And then there's also the Southern Tier Wrestling Officials Association Tournament at Dunkirk, which is also another great, uh, another great tournament. A lot yeah. of Niagara Front, because the NFL, um, their tournament is not this weekend. NFL? Niagara Frontier League. Oh. And then the Chautauqua Cattaraugus County Athletic Association, they don't have a tournament this weekend either. And then a lot of teams from Pennsylvania, um, you'll see a couple of them trickled north as well. Okay. Um, Eastern States, which is uh, actually, uh, it's a privately run tournament. It's been going on for 13 or 14 years now. It's Sullivan Community College down in Rockland County. Mm -hmm. um, the state seating committee, or the, the committee that does the seating, I won't say it's a state. It's a committee that does the seatings for the state. The New York State Public High School Athletic Association tournament actually takes your placement at this privately run tournament now in, uh, in consideration for your points and your seating me uh, mechanics at the state tournament. So that's a big, big deal. Winning the Eastern States or going there, competing there is, a, is, an, enormous, is an enormous deal nowadays. The Section 6 duels, uh, my favorite. Um, it's, it's only the second year of the Section 6 duels. Um, last year was a smashing success. Now the Section 6 duels, that's, um, is that different than the Section 6 tournament where they establish what team moves forward to the states? Yes, this That's is new. It's new. Um, okay. Section where I'm from in Section Three, we've had the Section Three duels for a very long time. And it's always been the top 16 teams, regardless mm -hmm. big or small school. You could have five small big schools and the in the rest of them small schools if if they qualify. Is it over one weekend? It's over one day. Yep. It's so one day. Some, in some places they do it in two days. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, the the state has created a, a dual meet. A few years ago, they decided we we're going to have a dual meet tournament. Now, in order to have a dual meet tournament, you have to have you have to have teams qualify for it. You have to have teams advance to it. And not every section did a dual meet tournament. Okay. Like section six, okay. for example, didn't have a dual meet tournament up until last last year, and it was a big time success. And I think that people, I'm very very excited for it to keep going for the momentum because you take the top eight big schools and the top eight small schools, you split them up into brackets, and you have them duke it out to get to the championship round. All in one day. All in one day. Yeah. So that must starts from like 9 a.m. to 12 midnight or yeah, something. Yeah, it could go. Yeah, you know, you could go from nine to it. You know, a big part of it depends on where you do it. Mm -hmm. So you have the mat space for it. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I've I've been in duels until nine o'clock at night or whatever. But it's but it's totally worth it. And right. um, so at the end of the day, the 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 champion of the big schools on the top side of the bracket or on one side of the bracket, and the champion of the small schools will meet for the overall championship. It doesn't matter at that point, though. Um, that one's kind of more just bragging rights because both of those teams will move on to the state dual meet tournament, which was at um, it'll be at Onondaga Community College in Syracuse this year. Okay. So, um, for example, last year um, Niagara Wheatfield won the large school bracket. Pioneer won the small school bracket. Niagara Wheatfield ended up defeating Pioneer. If that were to happen this year. Um, those both of those teams would move on to the state dual meet tournament, but I'm thinking that things may be a little different this year okay. um, in terms of who's the dominant teams. Now, in sections, 
Now, we're in Section 5 and Section 6. Mm -hmm. What's a dominant section? Three, one, two? Depends on, um, that's also a good question. Depends on division, if you're talking Division 1 or Division 2. I don't know. Division 1 is large schools, Division 2 small schools. Section 11 in Long Island mm -hmm. uh, has been on top for quite a long time. Okay. They send not only all 15 of their section champions, but in some cases they've sent 15, 16, maybe 17 wild cards. Okay. Either kids that took second in the section or even third place because they just have this, there's a whole PowerPoint system okay. um, where they fill out the last four spots in the brackets at the state tournament. And they have to have a, 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 a credible, qualitative way to decide who gets those, those, those points or who gets those bids based on a, a point system. Um, section 11 in big schools, section eight in big schools, um, section five in big schools is pretty good. Um, and then what does section six stack? Section six in big schools hasn't been great overall last few years at the state tournament in terms of where the sec we, we, the, 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 they earn points for the section. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the weekend, there's a ranking. It'll be you know section 11, first place overall with 260 points, section two, section three, whatever, just like that. Um, section six has been kind of middle of the road the last few years, um, big schools that is. Section six, small schools on the other hand, has been one of the top three or four sections in the state tournament for the last couple of years. Okay. Um, been very, very competitive. So on one side, you got the big schools section dominating, um, would probably be section 11, two, eight, and, uh, and five, mm -hmm. I would say. In small schools, the dominant sections are three, um, five, four, and six. So it's kind of the opposite. Well, you must do a lot of research, man. I'm just, I'm just around it, man. This time of year, this is all I do, really. Whew. Sounds complicated. Yeah. Now, as far as the fan base for wrestling in our area, how is that? Is it, is it, uh, is it huge? Because I see um, on uh, cable they have actual dual meets. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great. Is it? Yeah, it's um, it it, it could be better. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it, it's up to the people in in each school district to, to to get behind their own school first. I'm um, I'm a big fan of. Um, Yes, we want everybody to do, do well. We want the, everybody in the section to do well. We want everybody, we, we want to compete and we want to beat everybody, but ultimately when it's us versus them at the state tournament, at the state dual meet tournament, we want our guys to win. Okay. If everybody were to get behind their school, their team, their peewee program, and promote from within, that just raises the level of competition and it just makes everything better. Can you see, like, um, since you have, like, a peewee, um, you have a, a, a peewee league, if I, if I should say. Mm -hmm. Can you actually see from, like, a kid 10 years old, this guy is going to be a state champion? Mm -hmm. Can you actually see that? Yeah, yep. There's guys that, there, there's some uh, young men that have uh, natural talent. Mm -hmm. And um, whether or not they choose to, to continue with that, they have uh, good parental support, um, they have good family support to continue. Mm -hmm. Um, you see a lot of young men uh, burn out that are very, very talented from a young age, and it's too bad. Yeah. Um, I see that in boxing, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And um, it, it's hard to kind of keep that momentum and not fizzle out before you're in high school. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely, it, peop, it, it's, it's definitely easy to spot the most talented amongst the others uh, from an age of about 10 years old or so, like you said. 